welcome back. This is going to be part two of the rear disc brake swap for four lugs. It also applies to five lugs. For those interested who want to piece the kit together, I did a write-up last night. So I have a Microsoft Word document. Um, comment below your email and I'll, I guess I'll send it to you if you're interested. Um, but yeah, let's get into today's video. Yesterday, we left off with the rotor installed dust shields, the brackets, pulled the axles, all that. Right now I'm just waiting on a brake flaring tool kit to come in so I can flare this and put that in there. And then I have the calipers, but for some reason the calipers are missing the slide pins or whatever you want to call them. So I ordered those last night. So when those get in, we'll be able to throw the calipers on, excuse me, the pads on. And then I just need to run the e-brake cable still. Um, which I'm going to be waiting on. So today we're going to do the under the hood portion of the car. Um, so this is part of the e-brake cable. This is nuts for that. And then we have our two other e-brake cables here. Or parking brake, whatever you want to call it. So today we're doing the proportioning valve, the master cylinder, this new plug bolt on the stock proportioning valve, and we have the maximum motorsport lines. So let's get into it. Let's get the stuff off the hood. Let's open up the hood. And uh, let's get it done. And then I may or may not cover the e-brake portion today. Or I may do that in a separate video on how to do that. So, Okay, first things first. Here's our stock master cylinder. Stock proportion valve down here. So the first thing we're going to do is disconnect the low fluid sensor on the master cylinder. Get this out of the way. Okay, the next step is we're going to remove the two bolts that hold the master, or two nuts rather, that hold the master cylinder to the brake booster. Um, and then after that, we're gonna put plenty of rags beneath it because brake fluid will eat paint. So the less we spill, the better. And you wanna be quick about it. And if you do spill any brake fluid, you wanna wipe it up as soon as possible, unless you don't give a shit about your paint, but that's up to you. So I figured it always makes it easier if I include the bolt sizes for people that may be doing this. So the two bolts to the master cylinder have 9 16 nuts on them. Um, if that's correct so try that now first. that we have those two nuts off we're going to disconnect all three lines there's two on the side and one on the bottom um, the best thing to use is a brake wrench or flare wrench whatever the hell they're called because you do not want to strip these nuts with a regular wrench here's a couple tips uh, before you guys attempt this that I've had if your brakes have never been touched which I assume these were never replaced um, you will have to undo this one. So I remove them from here first and then from here. These sides are standard. These sides are metric. Fun fact. So I pulled off both of those lines here. Um, and you may want to hit them with some WD-40 or PB blaster at the joints. And let them soak for a little bit because some will spin freely like this. And these ones down here tend to twist the whole pipe with it. So that being said... You may just want to have some extra fittings on hand and some extra brake line um, as the two proportioning valve ones did not seem to come out so great. So now we'll attempt to, these two have to come out anyways from down here when you're going to use the Maxim Motorsports lines. And then one of these will be reused out of the three. I'm not sure yet, but I will update as I go along. So now we're going to pull this one off on the bottom. Now that we have the room to access it since those lines are out of the way. All right, we finally got the bottom line removed <clears throat> and the master cylinder. You can see how disgusting this is and all rusted and corroded. So I'm going to clean that up before I put the new one on because I literally had to use a screwdriver to pry off the old one, which you can see it's here, all crusty. So that's finally off. Lines are off. Now we can go and install the new one and get that going. Once you do a disconnect this bottom line, a lot of the fluid will start pouring out. So just keep that in mind and then wipe up as necessary. Okay, next up, we're going to pull out this uh, factory plug. You want to brace the proportioning valve when doing so so you don't twist it. And then we're going to replace it with this plug and we're going to have to swap over the O-ring onto this one. So, Okay, so we've taken out the stock plug um, and then we transferred over the O-ring using a pick. If the O-ring is a little tough, you might want to throw some motor oil on that just to lube it up a little bit to get it off of there. So now that that's out, we can take our pliers and we could gut this proportioning valve here. Okay, so I've now gutted the proportioning valve. Everything's out. A spring 
some o-rings and this bar whatever you want to call it um this was a little crusty in there so i couldn't get this out with pliers originally so i used a flathead to kind of pull out the spring and then i could get this out so now we're going to take this throw it on there and tighten it up and now we're moving on into installing all of the new parts all right i'm going to tighten that with a ratchet and brace it okay after you've done the proportioning valve next simply install your master cylinder put the two nuts back on and then we're going to go and start installing okay, the line. Okay, so we're going to take the T-fitting and put the stock line that comes from the bottom into it. And then we're going to take the, from the also from the Maxim Motorsports kit, um, put this into the middle of the T-fitting and then into the back of the master cylinder. And then we're going to take the other one and put this into the top of the T-fitting and then into the back of the uh, stock proportioning valve. And then we're going to use the other stock line for the front. All right, now we have this all set. The back goes to the middle part of the T-fitting. The top of the T-fitting goes to the back of the proportion valve. And the stock bottom line that went to the bottom of the master goes to the bottom of the T-fitting. Now we're going to take our line right here. Oh, excuse the rag. Right here, put this back in the top and this fitting back in the bottom and we'll have to massage this just like we massaged the rest of these to fit. Um, and then that should be it for the master and then we'll have to put our proportioning valve, our aftermarket one on the passenger side of the firewall. Right, guys, so. this line's in, all the fittings are on, all the lines are in, we plug the low fluid sensor back in. So this is it for the master cylinder. It's ugly, you really gotta massage the lines and with I believe these are NPT fittings, and you have to have them straight on to really thread in there without cross-threading. So now that that's done, we're going to take our proportioning valve. I went with Summit Racing because it's like $10, $15 cheaper than the Ford Racing, and it's literally the same exact valve. Um, everything looks the identical to it, just the sticker on the front's different. So we're going to install this on our union fitting over here on the passenger side firewall. So I'll get the tools. Get that off there. We put the rags on this side. We've removed the union fitting. And we're going to install the proportioning valve now. I would recommend a Summit Racing or Ford Racing proportioning valve over a Willwood because Summit and Ford come with the adapters that you need. You want the inside going to the line that goes towards the master cylinder and the outside going towards the, uh, the line that goes to the back of the car. Obviously, it's going to flow from the master cylinder to the brakes, so that's how you would do it. All right, guys, so we have the master cylinder all set with the new lines. We have the proportioning valve installed back there correctly. So at this point in time, you would bleed the brakes just like you normally bleed the brakes. Keep the master cylinder full at all times because once you don't want it to run low and then run air through the lines, and you're going to defeat the purpose if you do that. I would do that now, but I'm still waiting on parts to get the rear caliper, so the rear's not even sealed yet, so bleeding them would be pointless. Um, also today's video I was planning on including the e-brake or parking brake uh, but I think I'm just going to make a separate video for that show you guys how to do that and run the parking brakes on the car so this pretty much finalizes today's video on uh, the part 2 which would be the under the hood part of the disc brake conversion whether you're 5 lug or 4 lug this will apply to both um, and yeah that's about it guys stay tuned for future videos uh, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be putting, putting power steering back down below, getting rid of this, putting the AC back on the car, running the AC lines. Uh, I'm going to put a heater core back in the car and a new blower motor while I'm that far into it and a new AC, I forget the name, the box that's like a heater core, but it's for AC. Also, um, on the way now are window tints for the car. So I'm going to be tinting all the windows. I did it to my truck that I daily drive. So I'll show you guys uh, how to do that. It literally cost me 30 bucks for a set of pre-cut tints. So we'll be doing that shortly. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up today on the um, under the hood portion of a disc brake swap. I appreciate you guys watching. Subscribe if you haven't. And always, of course, like and comment. Thanks, guys.